between South Sudan, Uganda and Kenya was held in Kapoeta. And the conference brought together 150 participants from the three tribes uh, to participate in strengthening peace and reconciliation in continuation of previous conferences. That is what we want to talk about now. And joining me for that conversation is Honorable Ekwom Nabuin. is a member of parliament for Turkana North. Thank you. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you for having me. Let's just start, of course, with uh, just a bit of basics. Maybe just tell us. Paint a picture for us. What really is the issue, the cross-border issue between the Turkanas, the Karamojong, and the Toposa tribes? Yeah, the Turkana, Toposa, and the Karamoja are referred to as um, Ataker community. Mm -hmm. Ataker, uh, by virtue of um, speaking the same language, mm -hmm. we share culture uh, that, um, you know, is the same, you know, we... We kind of came from uh, the same direction, right. and uh, we are only divided by by the boundaries, the international boundaries that were created by the colonial masters. Mm -hmm. So, so we are community. We are one. We speak the same language. We share a culture. But for a long time, there's been conflict between all of. I mean, between us, mm -hmm. um, conflict mostly on um, the cut wrestling. Um, one community picks cows from the other, the other one retaliates. That has been there for a long time and we've lost lives. Um, mostly uh, what brings this community apart from maybe that bit of culture and uh, maybe restocking, um, uh, it is just because we, we look for water and pasture in the other areas mm -hmm. and in the process we, we, we get into conflict and uh, you know we, lives are lost. So for a long time that has been happening. Yeah. Governments, uh, subsequent uh, uh, governments have not really for a long time uh, put a lot of effort into bringing um, peace among us, these communities mm -hmm. and maybe because uh, it's cross-border. Um, it's, it's international in its nature. Um, uh, but um, uh, of late, there is effort from the Kenyan government, from the Ugandan government, from mm -hmm. the South Sudan government, in trying to bring, you know, a peaceful coexistence of these three communities. Mm -hmm. and, and that effort can be seen from uh, the recent uh, peace caravan mm -hmm. that, um, you know, took place from Lodwa, which brought together the Karamoja Toposas and, and Turkana. Mm -hmm. And uh, we needed to bring those three communities to another community which practices, you know, uh, you know pastoralism. Mm -hmm. That is the Maasai community in Kajado. Yeah. So we wanted our communities, the Hatakar community, to see, uh, to benchmark with the Maasai, mm -hmm. that they share a border mm -hmm. between Kenya and Tanzania, and they keep cows but there's little conflict with them. So how, how then can we go, uh, I mean, uh, you know, take this practice to our borders uh, mm -hmm. so that we can see how we can minimize this um, conflict. How have they been community. reacting, especially the, now the members of the Atakara community, how have they been, you know, responding to the peace uh, building that is trying to be done there? No, initially uh, the peace efforts were intermittent, you know, people were not taking um, those efforts very seriously. Mm -hmm. But of late, and I think with modernity, our communities are seeing different things from just keeping cattle. Um, there, is, there is a very serious, renewed, uh, like um, a different way of doing things. And uh, peace efforts are being taken up very seriously. And um, we can see this, uh, I mean, the, uh, the conflict has minimized. Mm -hmm. minimized but to the extent uh, where leadership because that's the big factor right. we can have the leadership take this uh, peace efforts forward in terms of preaching peace in terms of bringing these communities together in terms of putting infrastructure that uh, will be shared by this community in terms of appreciating our, our you know our, um, mm -hmm. our shared culture, our language. Mm -hmm. You know, when this is taken forward, especially by the leadership, we'll be able to see, uh, you know, a renewed kind of coexistence mm -hmm. between our communities. But then what do you think has been hindering the peace process really between these communities? 
mentally what has been hindering this uh, uh, peace effort is um, you, you know I, as mentioned mm -hmm. uh, we the, the part of Turkana for instance uh, during dry spells we we kind of experience uh, very serious challenges mm -hmm. in terms of pasture and water so uh, our pastoralists tend to move across the border and uh, they move uh, when they move across the border and there is there isn't that kind of arrangement bet, uh, between the Turkana, for instance, and the Karamoja, mm -hmm. to to maybe uh, allow the Turkanas to uh, maybe utilize water resources, pasture on the other side. There will be conflict, mm -hmm. and um, so that is majorly what has been happening. But now with this engagement, we'll be able to go ahead of you know our pastoral community and engage the other, the other communities, say mm -hmm. Toposas or Kamojas, to be able to allow and live with their, with their kings, you know, during those dry seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mainly that is what is happening. But again, mm -hmm. as indicated, uh, leadership, leadership is a big factor. You will find and realize there are those leaders who really want to take advantage of you know, situations like this to prepare themselves, to, you know, to be liked or something like that. Yeah. But if all of us will be keen on ensuring this peace, co peaceful co coexistence mm -hmm. of Ataker community, that will definitely happen. I want to talk about leadership again. I mean, do the local leaders work together with the traditional leaders, if I could call, if they're chiefs, if they're, you know, elders in the community, do they work together? And are there any challenges when it comes to them together working to, like, negotiate? Yeah, that is the missing link. Mm -hmm. Because um, sometimes you find people who are taken to do uh, peace, I mean, to engage in peace um, efforts are not the people who are, you know, participating in the conflict. Mm -hmm. So um, that has been identified, uh, identified as a factor. Yeah. So that, you know, the warriors and the traditional leaders that organize uh, this um, conflict should be engaged. They should take uh, the lead in trying to engage with the other, they, because they know each other. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the leaders, the traditional leaders and the warriors from this side are known to, the, to across the board. Mm -hmm. so, so if these people are engaged, you know, from that level, uh, I want to believe that is what one thing that will bring uh, peaceful coexistence among mm -hmm. the Ateker community. Right. Yeah. When there's conflict, you know, there's usually, um, in terms of like development and economic challenges, what do you think has been bringing them back? Are there challenges you've seen in terms of development that has been brought back due to the ongoing conflict in that area? Um, of course, uh, during conflict, they will, there, there's nothing that takes place around those areas because mm -hmm. sometimes we would want to identify areas across the border or within those borders where, you know, development uh, projects can be undertaken. Like, say, you know, dispensaries, schools, water pans, you know, boreholes. They can't take place during, you know, conflict. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it is until we have peaceful coexistence, it is until we have these communities, you know, engage peacefully. Mm -hmm. That is when we can, we, can, we can have those development. I can give example of Mm -hmm. Like there is a road, an international road that goes, um, uh, you know, to South Sudan. Yes. Now the Nadapal area. Mm -hmm. For a long time that road has, has not taken off because of the conflict between communities. Mm -hmm. So, so there is a lot that in needed to happen around that border that has not taken place. Mm -hmm. um, again, boundaries along that, along that border, uh, the border from. Uh, Uganda all the way to South Sudan and mm -hmm. even Ethiopia have not been demarcated. Right. Efforts to do that has also not uh, been easy mm -hmm. for government. So, um, so I think this renewed effort to have these communities live peacefully uh, is out of is born out of uh, those challenges. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I think the government has come out very strongly. Right. to ensure that there is this coexistence, peaceful coexistence 
so that you know some projects can take place mm -hmm. yeah who are the most affected mostly usually in conflict or in war it's usually women and children and if they are the ones affected is there like a strategy to protect them yeah traditionally um, we protect children and women mm -hmm. um, but again we, uh, with the renewed effort we really want to engage women as well into you know these uh, peace uh, conferences so that you know they have a bigger stake in engaging men mm -hmm. you know traditionally when women speak and you know uh, we really don't want to see our women shed tears right so so when they speak with you know love and you know they kind of engage men warriors not to be not to go for this conflict mm -hmm. and, and and look at, at different ways of you know um, uh, making their livelihood mm -hmm. so so women uh, as uh, their stakeholders and and even during this peace uh, caravan we en we ensured that we got women you know a representation of women mm -hmm. to be able to see come also and see how women Maasai, mm -hmm. Maasai women, mm -hmm. are doing for li their livelihood instead of maybe engaging in other things. Mm -hmm. So women, of course, are protected, mm -hmm. but they become vulnerable in terms, in, I mean, in times of uh, conflict. conflict. Very extremely vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. What about external actors or just people away from those particular communities? Could be people, let's say, from Uganda or even other parts of the country. Are you seeing such efforts to help? Uh, restore peace in that area. Um, recently, we've we've seen um, the South Sudan and Uganda uh, communities and leadership uh, coming out very strongly and wanting to to mm -hmm. engage in this peace effort. Um, for a long time, that has not been uh, coming out, but I think there is renewed effort from all the countries. And, and the East African community has been, um, uh, has been central yeah. in kind of bringing the leadership from all the three countries together. Um, there is also the Kenya boundary, the Kenya boundary, uh, uh, um, it's called the Kenya International mm -hmm. Boundary mm -hmm. uh, Office, mm -hmm. Kibo, mm -hmm. has also been very strongly uh, into this effort. Um, of course, uh, the government uh, through the office of the president has also been um, strongly out to bring, you know, peaceful coexistence into mm -hmm. these communities. So right, uh, right now there is, there is serious engagement mm -hmm. uh, from both government and, you know, uh, civil societies to ensure that there is, there is peaceful engagement. And I think from the other side as well, because like uh, to kind of not borders, uh, the Ethiopia and South Sudan. Right. There has been a very different way of engagement, which has not been the case before. Um, we have to post us now grazing together with the Turkanas. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, in the last uh, dry spell, we had the Turkanas uh, with the Nyangatom of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. You know, Turkanas crossed the border, and uh, all that time they were together and there was very little conflict among us. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of engagement that is going on mm -hmm. um, across the border. Mm -hmm. So as a leadership, we, I am very optimistic that uh, uh, they, there will be peace among mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. yeah, if this continues. Right. And if leadership will be ready to join hands in ensuring that this effort is sustained. What about public awareness? I mean, I, you know, it's important for the communities like the Karamojong and the Turkana communities to be engaged to make sure that there is long-term success in terms of peace, uh, the peace talks. Are they being told about it? Are they being talked to about it? Yeah, um, uh, definitely. Uh, in fact, what has brought uh, the change of uh, this, this kind of uh, things that are taking place is the public has been engaged for a while. Mm -hmm. The warriors has, have been brought together to, to see, you know, the advantages of, you know, uh, peaceful co coexistence. Because you realize um, being a county far away from, you know, the grain baskets where, you know, food is um, mm -hmm. produced, we, we, it is easier for us to access food stuff from even those other countries. So um, if those borders are opened, if these, uh, co is, if these communities will live with us um, 
you know, peacefully, we'll be able to mm -hmm. access a lot of things. There are a lot of advantages to our side yeah. than even them. Right. Yeah. What about in terms of just monitoring that these peace talks actually prevail? Are there plans that have been put in place to monitor these talks? And that is a challenge. I, we, we really need to see how we can sustain this peace. Because sometimes, uh, I mean, uh, previously, mm -hmm. there will be efforts to bring peace, and then all of a sudden everybody takes off and there is nothing to follow and sustain the peaceful ef uh, efforts. But this time around, we've identified that as one of the areas we really need to put a framework where mm -hmm. we can be able to engage, continue engaging mm -hmm. and have these communities live peacefully. Mm -hmm. so, so that is in the works. That is one of the things we've identified as a leadership to follow up and ensure that uh, we can mm -hmm. you know, monitor and ensure um, there is sustainable peace. So is there's no way that you would put an, uh, you know, like a timeline towards when this peace talks will stop? Not so now. It's uh, continuous. Sorry, not now, that, yeah. but um, um, it is something that we're working on. Mm -hmm. um, given that East African communities are, and community has taken interest in this, mm -hmm. and AU at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, there, there's a team that is working on uh, what we can do going forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of like security and disarmament, usually in such an area, it's usually very um, high. Are there any particular steps that are being taken um, to ensure that there is safety and stability in the region once a, an agreement has been reached? Disarmament will be a challenge at this point, um, given that uh, this is across the border. So that means, mm -hmm. you know, different governments have to engage and see how they can. You know, if it is disarmament, then it should be done across at the same time. If you disarm one community, then the other will, 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 will be vulnerable to raids. And so, so it is something, again, East African community is looking at mm -hmm. and engaging government to see how we can, you know, at the same time disarm. That should be the long term, mm -hmm. long term thing that we need to do. Because, you know, with the power of the gun, even with these efforts, there are those who really want to, you know, cross the border, do the raid. Um, so, so at the end of the day, we really need to disarm these communities. Mm -hmm. But we have to do it also for all the communities mm -hmm. across the border at the same time. Uh, you are first time member of parliament for Turkana. Yes, Turkana. Yes, how's been your ex how's your experience so far, especially when it comes to these conflicts? Uh, my like trying to resolve the conflicts. Yeah, um, from where I sit and uh, for the period of uh, I think uh, nine, I mean one year. Yeah. Today we are celebrating our first anniversary. Um, yeah. In Parliament, so right. after being elected, mm -hmm. so so far so good. Mm -hmm. Initially, we, it was tough. Mm -hmm. You would like you can't sit as a member of Parliament. The previous, you know, I mean, of course, we we were engaging also. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will hear this area has been attacked, but for all this period, mm -hmm. there have been very minimum attacks in my area mm -hmm. uh, because we have the Toposas, we have the Nyangatom. Mm -hmm. and the dasnat of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. um, there have been very minimal attacks and uh, uh, what has saved me, right. uh, which might be good for me, mm -hmm. is we've established a relationship with the leadership across the border. Mm -hmm. So when we hear this, because the things we get to know earlier, Right. Even even uh, raiders get to know that the other community is coming. coming. So when we get to know, you know, uh, uh, that there's something like that, then we make calls and engage the leadership across the border, mm -hmm. and they are able to tell their people to stop. So so there have been very minimal attacks, mm -hmm. and again, of course, um, it is not easy to stop it uh, right away. There are people we are calling thieves, warriors who mm -hmm. really want to you know, come, attack, go away with the cows. Yeah. So those ones continue to be there, but, um, you know, some framework has been put in place so that in case they come in with, um, with cows, then we'll be able to reprimand and, you know, get the cows back to mm -hmm. other communities. Those efforts are continuing mm -hmm. and we want to believe me. In future, maybe that will, 
will, will be minimized. Right. Yeah. Would you like to see more support maybe from the government in enhancing this peace process? Extremely. Uh, government is key. Mm -hmm. Government is key and, uh, and I want to believe uh, there is an office uh, a director for peace. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, maybe resources need to be, be, be you know, put into that office to be able to monitor and uh, you know, help facilitate uh, these efforts. Because uh, without government, there's nothing that will take place. Mm -hmm. We've had, you know, NGOs doing the same thing for a long time, but we, we have never seen um, uh, positive results. But now, with the renewed efforts of the government and the resources that are being put into this, mm -hmm. um, we are seeing a different, uh, a positive uh, outcome out of it. So mm -hmm. government should put resources into uh, peaceful uh, uh, efforts um, across the border, mm -hmm. but again, uh, there is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the conflict within the country, yeah. like the one to Kana, Pokot, Samburu. The, I mean, the Kerio Valley. Yeah, I, I think uh, it is shame for government to continue, you know, speaking about conflicts in, inside the country, mm -hmm. especially that one that can be sustained. Yeah. Um, there are, there are efforts, but again, a lot needs to be done uh, within that region. Mm -hmm. But across the border, we will definitely continue engaging and sustaining these peace efforts. Right. Yeah. My final question to you, um, I mean, what message would you have uh, to the people of that particular area to ensure that there is peace talks? If you were to talk to them, yeah. what message would you have for them? Uh, my message to the Ataka community, there is so much we can benefit from peaceful coexistence. Uh, South Sudan uh, is relatively a young country and it's been in conflict for a long time. Mm -hmm. If they can be able to, you know, uh, relate with Kenya, there's a lot of development that can take place across the board, across right. the border. Kenya definitely uh, um, being a very stable country and developed, in, of course, in the, uh, in the context of the East African region, um, will be able to do business, a mm -hmm. lot of booming business across the board. Mm -hmm. Uganda has been uh, uh, great in terms of relationship between the Karamoja and the Turkana, yeah. but uh, a few months ago there has been a bit of conflict here and there. Yeah. We can eradicate that amongst the Ugandan and Kenya. So, so for the Article community, there is need for us to remain peaceful. Mm -hmm. uh, we have no other option if we want to move forward as a community. Mm -hmm. So let's join together. Let the leadership be serious. Leadership, including myself, should be serious in sustaining this uh, and, and government should be able to to, to monitor mm -hmm. what the leadership is doing so that if there are those some of these leaders who want to take advantage of conflict then they should be able to, to be reprimanded very yeah. very interesting yeah. Yeah. thank you so much for your insights i think that was a very interesting conversation um that was honorable ekwam nabuin he's the member of parliament for turkana north we're just discussing um, the conflict 